Okay. My uh, mine's gonna be a bit different than Paul's. Everybody's got their thing. Everybody does their bees or bees, but I almost exclusively run the polystyrene hives. I do have one wooden hive, George. <laughs> um, inch and a half, high density polystyrene styrofoam. It's a beer cooler, a little denser. Um, they have screen bottom boards with, with a pull out tray. This is the entrance. It's a standard comb style entrance. It can be flipped over for transportation or whatever. Um, I leave it like that all year, just like that. Don't touch it. Uh, my winter configuration, in my last pull was in J June, late June, the spring honey is when I, I do my, my extraction. Anything after that, I'll leave a super on. And if they fill it, they fill it. If not, I pull it. I typically, by the beginning of August, I, I push all my bees down into a single. Let them finish whatever they can find, whatever they can scavenge, slurpees, flowers, whatever. I'm looking, I'm looking to get at least six frames worth of uh, hot stores in here. Four frames of brood, three on three, four on two, whatever. I'd like to get about 50 to 60 pounds of nectar in it, or uh, excuse me, honey in here. So. Unless, it, unless in August it is still a huge hive and I see a flow coming, I'll leave this on. Otherwise, I'll pull the excluder and push them down into a single. Now, oh here. For my inner cover, I use the feeder. The bees typically propolize this all up. There is ventilation up here which lasts for about three weeks, and then it's propolized up. So that's my inner cover. 10 frames, I like to have like six, six frames of honey, four frames of brood, and inner cover. My outer cover, part of, you know, it's part of their system, same thing, inch and a half polystyrene. It's got ventilation holes in the back, they can be either solid plugs, or they can be the vented plugs. I typically, in the winter, I'll pop out all, when I say in the winter, around December when I do my mite treatment, I'll pop out all the vents, put the solids in, latch it, and then I see them in February or March. What two winter survive? Last year, I lost three. Every year. Uh, say 20%. I'm, I'm sorry, I lost 20%. You lost 20%. Yeah. And last year, three out of uh, three. Out of, three out of 12, one was starvation. That was in a wooden hive. The uh, the other two were most likely mites. Um, and what they were, they didn't starve. The one, well, I did lose one from starvation. Um, I did, lost two from mites. Um, I, I didn't get on top of them early enough, you know, my fault. Uh, but as far as the starvation goes, I've only lost one because of starvation. Um, I, do, I do keep the bottom tray in. I keep the bottom tray in all year. Even, even in the summer, winter, fall, whatever, the bottom tray stays in. This is, I use this for diagnostics. I can see what, where the cappings are. Excuse me. Uh, see what's going on inside the hive. Um, when I put empty frames in, you can see the little wax flakes where they drop their wax flakes accidentally. So you'll be able to see where they're building the frames out, uh, clean it off, put it back in. So that's my standard all year configuration. Now I'm running 20 of these uh, 10 frame systems and a handful of six frame. Their, their nukes are, are six frame. Uh, and it works well for me. I'm, I'm kind of, I'll be honest, I'm kind of lazy when it comes to like feeding and what have you. I typically don't feed. If I have to feed, the feeder's there. If I don't, it's still there. And that, 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 that's my configuration. I don't use upper ventilation. Um, 
So how do, how wet does it get inside there? I, I, I never actually went inside. You know, I, I kind of, I don't fit very well, but. you got to remember that's way more insulated. Than yeah, I, I, I've never lost one because of moisture or anything like that. So you won't get the condensation like you would in a normal hive. I would imagine. Um, you shouldn't because it's so insulated. So your inside should stay nice and warm. And you shouldn't get as much condensation like you would inside a three-quarter inch piece of wood that gets cold air coming through. Like sure. Condensate on the wall and the ceiling. Sure. Now, there one a, disadvantage. There was an article in American Bee Journal this this month about that issue about upper ventilation versus no upper ventilation, and the author said if you have enough top insulation and side insulation, then you don't have to worry about having an upper ventilation. Hole. Now, I know that goes against some of the 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 the, uh, the practices that that sure. you know, we know kind of are effective, but that was the author's point. Now, one of the disadvantages to running the, the thick insulation hives. In the spring, when when you're you're talking to other beekeepers with wooden hives, their bees are flying and having a good time. You get these rogue 50 degree days in December or July, and their bees go out and do their. These do not. They don't. They don't. I, I'm not sure how the bees yeah, recognize. That's one of the serious negative impacts on a lot of the research is the fact that they're very slow to build up the spring. Well, I, full insulation they really. They I, I I don't know about that because um. By March, well, because I'm running single deeps. If I'm running two deeps, I don't know. I've never done it. But the single deeps, yeah. By by March, I'm I'm at least six frames of brood in there. You know, I'm I'm starting to get nervous about swarm. That's when I that's when I start thinking about Demaray. Is March, April, uh, a bit earlier than a double deep wood. Uh, but like, but you are correct. There there was a back in. Uh, in Europe, they used to run the, the, uh, a second larger box. WBC. Okay, it, it's basically a second high bodies that fit around, and you got a three or four inch air gap there. And those hives were actually it was detrimental to the hive because they didn't know when spring was actually happening, and they didn't perform well. That is correct. Uh, I haven't had any issues with that. I do. Under, I, I have read the research on that, but I haven't had that that issue with here. Now they again there's rogue. Those rogue days that it's warm, these don't fly. Uh, but that's a beautiful thing about the, uh, the IPM board. You still can you can still monitor what's going on inside without having to, 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 to be all creepy about it and you know poking in there when you shouldn't be. Um, and then with the IPM board, I also sometimes I'll take my phone, take cameras up underneath um, through the screen. And, and just to clarify, the top entrance, uh, the British use the WBC hive, which is an insulation hive. Um, they moved away from it uh, to a single just because of these problems. And also, what they did is they put a top insulation in the latest ones, have the top uh, entrance uh, to alleviate some of the problems. Uh, so, this has come full circle. And, and sure. They invented 150 years ago. So, it's, 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 it's going cycles and cycles and cycles. There, there was a time when I would leave one of these with a ventilation hole and just close all the other ones up. The bees were the bees were propolizing the feeder anyway, so I wasn't actually getting the ventilation. All I was doing was allowing the cold water or cold air to lay on top of that feeder. So so being, so closing up all eight eight of these ventilation holes uh, alleviate, uh, eliminates the, the the cold air just laying in that that pool of uh, where the feeder is. Um, would you get cold air up there? It's convection. The hot air would rise. Would it push the air out? It, it, and that that, that 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 is true, but like I'm saying, they, they, they seal up the feeder. Oh. So I'm not getting air past it's not coming up. That is correct. Uh, so leaving that extra insulation or that extra hole, all it was doing was allow air to lay in the trough of that feeder. I got you. You know, when when I would pull these off, this area here, you could feel if you put your hand on it, you could feel the bees heat. Right. But once you took it off, your hands were freezing. Right, so your insulation lid really was doing exactly, good. Exactly, exactly. So, so my, my solution last year, I quit, I quit leaving the one out, and I put all the, all the styrofoam plugs in. So let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. So you're, you're talking about them not flying like the rest of the bees that are in wooden boxes, correct? So when you see the bees in the wooden boxes fly, pull your ventilation hole so you get convection so it's not flying. That, that may be 
completely true, but I don't micromanage. I don't micromanage. I'm just saying that it makes sense that it's springtime outside, and maybe that would kickstart it sooner. Probably. Probably, but it, like I say, I, um, I don't want to. I, I am a lazy beekeeper. <laughs> yeah. Um, when they start flying is when I start getting excited. Um, yeah, I, I don't. I don't force them to do weird shit or anything or stuff. Um, like I say, this is this is my standard winter configuration, and come spring, I, I start flipping into a demo rate. You know, I'll, I'll put my my medium back, my mediums back on a deep, pull brood out of here, throw it up in the deep, and then uh, you know I, that that'll buy me a month or so before I have to really start worrying about anything crazy. Um, I do want to give a shout out to Better Bee, Better Bee sells these. Uh, I got an email from Paul. He actually emailed me earlier in the week, but it went to my spam folder. <laughs> So Wednesday I read it and I didn't have any extra equipment. So I called Better B and told him I'm for the CCBA. I need this by Saturday. They jumped on it, had it had it in the mail. It was in my house on Thursday. What's the cost of this compared to a wooden? I did. I actually kept my receipt here. It, this shipped is 140. It's 123 dollars for this kit. The, the, for yes, for everything here, including the feeder. Now it's twenty dollars shipping. Now you can get two of these shipped for that same twenty dollars. Okay. So this particular setup was one hundred and forty-nine dollars. So I, I, I guess it was one hundred and thirty dollars, um, which I, I again I did keep the receipt. Yeah, no no bees, no no frames, no nothing. No medium. No medium. Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 damn. I mean, I'm asking, is that with that with the yes, that was with a medium. This is no medium just because. I ordered a medium with this whole setup. I didn't feel like painting it on Thursday, <laughs> so I just grabbed the medium from the shed. But, but that's a Lysan, is it not? That is. But this is a Lysan. This is a Lysan kit. Uh, there is a bunch of Better Bee catalogs here. Uh, it is a Lysan kit. Uh, they get their Better Bee has a little deal with them. They get their little their their plug-in on it. Um, they come unassembled. You know, it's nine, uh, 12, 12 screws, twelve screws. Um, these are screwed down. You don't have to screw them down. I do, um, just because I do. Um, and that's it. That, that, that's how I winterize these. And what's that? I do paint these. What do you paint them with? Just out, just outdoor semi gloss. Um, I use a, a sprayer. Um, you know, a high gravity sprayer. What kind of where did you get on your corners? Yeah, it, it, this 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 box here is probably three years old. And it's very minimal. When, when they glue these together, their actual the actual amount of propolis they get in here isn't much, and they pop right off. Yeah, once you once you get this, it, the whole thing just pops right off. Uh, queen ex, the Queen Excluder one is probably the worst as far as propolis, but it's 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 easier because. Because with the the, the three sixteenth or quarter inch gap from the queen excluder, you actually get your your hive tool against the queen excluder in the box. You're not actually prying on the corner of the box. So, um, as far as propolizing goes, yeah, these always just pop right off. Uh, again, this box here is probably three years old, and there, there's maybe a little bit here in the corner. Excuse me. Any degradation from sunlight? No, that's why they do require you to paint them. Um, but as, as far as, as, you know, they are styrofoam. If, if a mice decides he wants to chew on them, he's going to chew on them. If ants want to, carpenter ants want to get in there, they're going to chew on it. Um, I don't know if these are what you would call forever hive. You know, I may not be able to hand this down to my grandkids or anything like that. Um, but if I get 120 pounds of honey off of it every year, it's paid for itself. What's that? Me? No. I, I, I would imagine. I, I would imagine. Question. My point is, it's a good question. It's a good question. <coughs> Can oh, you could, paint could you paint the inside? Yeah. They need to stop them from chewing it. Because they won't chew it. No, the, bee, the bees don't chew it. Oh, what does? I'm talking, you know, this, I'm just explaining. Uh, I'm, I'm sure the questions are, are running through people's minds. How durable are they? Do the mice chew them? Do the ants chew them? Yes, uh, they are styrofoam. Okay. Um, now, I do get a little bit of chewing. Usually, right... In this area, they'll chew down the bees well. Just one or two spots here. And I don't know why they do it. They do that to your reducers. That, the wooden reducers, they'll chew the wood. Yeah, yeah, they do that right 
like I say, it's only one little spot about an uh, inch wide that they, they'll do it on. And, it, and I think it's, not all my hives do it, but most of them do. It's not, it's not super deep, but it does happen. That's the only, that's the only damage that the bees have caused. Yes, Keith? Uh, I run five of these uh, with five wooden ones. Yes. And I notice no real difference. Okay. So it's not a, not a major thing. So I, I, I'm always looking at how they react and, you know, what the honey harvest and the speed. It's not much difference. That, that may be true. That may be true. I, I run a, a top entrance in winter. Okay. So um. And again, you know, my, my, the, the reason I was asked wasn't to sell beehives here today, but <laughs> it was just to show you how I winterize my, my bees. And starvation is never an issue for these. If I don't treat it for mites, mites will be an issue. Uh, again, the one hive I did lose was a wood knot from starvation. And, and the hive itself, is it lighter than a wood knot? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like I said, I, I mean, this is a... Yeah. Yeah, they're not as durable and woodpeckers like that. So the woodpeckers are standing on it. That's what I worry about at night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just when you guys get nicely. Before we go, thanks, Ed. I'm gonna, before we go 